All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to my channel, Smirking Reviews. And uh, we're back with more Better Call Saul Season 6, Episode 3. We're minus the green screen. We're minus the bells and whistles because I wanted to go just... I had said I wanted to just go back to doing Better Call Saul the way I always did, which is just here, in front of my TV, get this stuff done and, and out. So full spoilers, uh, if you've not seen this episode that just finished, and as it says in my thumbnail, recap, reaction, review. And I'm for, I, I was, I, I don't think I have to uh, figure out where I'm going to start first. So again, if you're liking what we're doing here on the channel, <laughs> sorry, I'm, what? It's, like and subscribe. What? Holy sh shit. There was a lot of buzz going on around. And we're, we're starting with the reaction, by the way, everybody. <laughs> In case you can't tell. This is a real reaction. Because it just happened. There's a lot of buzz going around about how Nacho's going to be fine. It, it all kind of looks like it's all going to work out for old Nacho. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh my gosh, so this, I honestly, if you had said that this was going to happen in episode three, I'd have just said, get right out of town. Get out of town! Nacho's dead in episode three. I, I, I didn't have good money on him getting out, but when some people, the, the, I was, I, when I heard the buzzing around, they're like, maybe he'll be fine. I, I, oh great, my phone's going off. And I'm trying to press pause. This is not working out. All right, I, I don't, I don't know why somebody decided to call me. Why did I have my volume on? My, we got to talk about this. I, all right, I'm not sure where the edit's gonna be in this. But my phone started ringing and totally throws everything off. So fuck you, whoever just called me. So I, I kind of entertain the idea. It's like, what would it take for, for Nacho to get out of this? Maybe maybe he gives up everybody. Maybe he goes in and becomes a rat and goes into witness protection and he takes off with his dad. Maybe. And how the, the, this guy has been through hell. Now, I'm not saying he's a good guy. But... I knew that, like, he would do anything to protect his father, and the whole sacrifice himself play felt like a play. It felt like if if the worst, but if the worst came across, he he was thinking, okay, I'll I'll die, but my dad will be fine. So I always thought that there was some other play, and it just it harkens back to again what Mike said, and and you could call this like a, something that will probably be used a lot over the course of this final season is you're it's not going to end the way you think, and honestly, I I really didn't think that this was going to happen right here. So very straightforward, but still, Nacho got to go out like a boss in his own way. He took it when you're in this kind of situation. I will leave it to other people to make their own decision on what you do next. But Nacho took his own way out. He went out on his own terms. He agreed to all this. They had set things up so that he would be quick and over and no one would be the wiser. But since he was going out, he chose his own way. And, and I know that I was gonna, I was so ready. With my notes, I'm good. I'm a good note taker. There's more on the other side of this. I was ready to go through the whole thing like nothing. Because we really didn't get anything. We all we got was things getting started. With Jimmy and Kim. And, and, and the stuff with Suzanne. This is probably going to be a very quick video. Because this is just... This, this bulk of this is just Nacho Show. And I, I even was thinking about how... And in some ways, I mean, this has become like a, a lot bigger show than just the Saul stuff. But losing Nacho here is a big, 
it might be a way for them to kind of close out some of this story so that they can focus more on Saul and Bob Odenkirk's character, you know, and and Kim Wexler played insanely brilliantly by Rhea Seahorn, who has got it. Like the love that she's getting, I'm I'm so proud of all the the community of Better Call Saul. The ones that aren't delusional, the ones that don't identify their entire existence behind this amazing show. Admittedly, amazing show, amazing universe. But some of these people who who just live and die by their thing that they're I don't know. I'm getting off track, but. I, the, the community reaching out and, and just praising Rhea, deservedly so. But this is Nacho's show. This episode is his farewell, and we just didn't even know it. And, and the beginning of this episode, um, we're just, now we're sliding kind of back into recap reviewer territory, is, you know, how, how are they going to take this rainstorm and the flower and the little clinking and, and, and tie that together. And even in this beginning, like I've talked about the tension that this show has, even in that desert scene, as they're panning around and what is this going to lead towards, there's, that's tension. So, he allows himself to, I mean, he, okay, the, the journey that Nacho goes through already. He gets out of his car after the escape, the big tremendous exciting escape he gets out and he runs and my first thought was when he sees the tanker was keep running bitch do not stop here now what we get instead is like he climbs into the tanker and it's a really if you're gonna create this scene if he's not gonna run any further this is amazing i mean but it just shows what nacho is you know his will to survive and what he's willing to do and in the end, what he's willing to do for the right reasons and the right people. And getting into a tanker and then submerging himself in fucking oil. I was going, fuck. <laughs> what the hell is that? So this guy is putting himself through hell. But he knows he knows the score, too. Like, not just such a freaking amazingly... Of, <sighs> well thought out and planned and written character and then portrayed amazingly of course by Michael Mando who I I don't I, the, the thing that I'm mad about is that we no longer get him on the show anymore episode 3 we're done with with Nacho and I, I miss Michael Mando and he's barely been gone for it's not even 9 o'clock yet so like the broadcast isn't even over I watched this on AMC Plus um so <laughs> Anyway, his his journey is over. Hopefully his, his father uh, will get out. And since we're talking about it, we'll, we'll just talk about all this. Because everything else now just kind of... We'll get to Jimmy and Kim's stuff in a second. But just the, his way right here, how he got to choose to go out. And seemingly maybe is he going to turn on Gus? Pulling on the zip tie? But this was between him and Hector. And when he turns and, and, and tells him, like, because kind of forgot about this. Everything, so much has gone on that you forget that, uh, that Nacho's the one who put him in the chair, not Gus. And that Gus just kept him alive. Gus could have just killed him. So Nacho being able to look at Hector directly in the face, talk to the brothers, you two fucking psychos, and you, and when you're ever you're in that chair and you look in that look at his face, he's giving Hector the look back at him. Just amazing. And taking taking himself out was I just didn't when it happened I was just like Fuck. What a way to end an episode. So, uh, better. there's going to be more people talking about this than ever, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to make this briefer so that you guys can like go, well, okay, he got to the point. We're moving on. The, the Jimmy and Kim stuff, it started out pretty good, right? You know, we got the planning and what they're going to do with Howard's car, and the most important part about this really was uh, how they got the keys. And, and uh, the amazing way that they always show these little scams and how they work them, and with Huel here, 
coming back. That was great. Now, there's also the scene with Suzanne, who's trying to, again, Kim, the, the reason this is great is just Kim's reaction to it all. Not to the fact that they're trying to, you know, they know that they've blown this and they're trying to weasel away their way in. Um, and, 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 and still thinking how Jimmy's got to be some kind of dupe. Not realizing who, how smart both of these people are. How, you know, trying to appeal to their sense of decency and how Jimmy deep down is a good person and all that. And they're just, it's just not falling on, landing on, I'm sorry, there's like a lot of noise in my house right now. This is just a crazy loud night. Phone, my phone's going off, somebody else's phone's going off. It's, so anyway, when Kim brings this to Jimmy's attention, it again, it's just like, the, the, the most interesting uh, part of it is just their kind of relief and how they can move on, not knowing that Lalo is fine. Um, but then with the, the way that they show how they get the keys and, and, and the journey that the car takes, showing the distance away it goes and how they have to do the switch, how they only have a certain amount of time. And I thought that they were just like replacing a key. And instead, they make this whole makeshift remote control, you know, car remote control to get into the car and stuff. That Gotta give it up to them. They, they always find a way on this show to make things, like, really interesting. And with Huel here uh, coming back, it was really cool. Always seeing him, him around. And yes, he looks decidedly different from his Breaking Bad days. In fact, he looks pretty good. Um, but his whole thing... Uh, about asking Jimmy, why do you do this? You are a lawyer. You can make legit money. You're a legit lawyer. Your wife, legit lawyer. Why do you do this? We're doing this to help people. This is going to help a whole lot of people. But it's also going to help them. And it's also, you know, just the, the kind of denial and, and, and from looking at it from a cr another criminal's point of view. Or like, I don't even know if, if Huel would call himself a criminal, right? Because I mean, just calling somebody a criminal, somebody who has done crimes just a criminal is like calling somebody that, you know, I don't know. It's all about perspective, I guess. In some of it, in some ways, I guess. Um, but he will putting it to, to them as somebody who's felt like he's had to do what he's had to do and he's willing to do certain things and he is morally flexible too. But seeing two people that don't have to do this, it's ridiculous. And it, and it kind of showing us like, this is, they're pretty, they're blowing it. They just are too... I would say at this point, they, they are too kind of far gone already. And in some ways, these two stories are kind of similar. Because both characters are having to pick, like, who's going to be our friend? You know, who's going to be the person that we side with? Like, Kim says, are you a friend of the cartel? Or are you going to be a rat? And Nacho has to basically, you know, the same, like which cartel do you side with to save your dad? Who's, who's going to protect you and your dad? Like, you know what I mean? Like you're going to die. Who's going to give you the best death and who's going to protect your family? Now you could say that they could just kill his dad anyway. But I'm hoping that the situation that happens is that Mike gets his dad out and just says, look, your son's gone and you're next. We're getting you out of here. And I, I, this really sucks because um, normally I would have gone on a lot longer. But there's a lot of weirdness going on in my house and I've got to kind of find out what it is. So I'm cutting this short. <laughs> and you know me, you know, I, I, I'm keeping it real here. So if you like what I said here, as weird as this night has become, uh, please hit the like button. Don't forget to comment, share, tell me all what you guys think. Bring up all the stuff that I forgot because there were, after last week, there was only one person who was a dick. But the rest of you guys are always great. So I really appreciate it. Uh, again, so like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Hopefully my life won't feel so whatever's going on in the house right now. Hopefully next week will be a little bit calmer and I'll be able to talk a little bit more about this because I would really like to dive a little bit more, especially into the psychology of what Kim and Jimmy are doing. Um, and I can't wait for next week when we hopefully get to see what they're going to do with Howard's car. So have a great day, everybody.
and I'll see you in the next video.